She gives different versions of the events. Sometimes she says she didn't see the person who came in the house. She believed it to be an intruder. And in the same story, she will tell the person, and then I call, and then I called out Philip, and I talked to him, and he said this and that. So there are things in her versions that don't make any sense. At one point, she says, he was joking and put the gun to his head and said, what are you going to do, shoot me? And then in another version, she's got him fighting with her. And then she, in another version, this is all a joke. Listen to the wording that she uses. Listen when she walks out of the house and the police respond, it's he's been shot. He's been shot. Not he shot himself. Not the words that you would expect to hear had he shot himself. The problem is, in that room, that night, there's only two people. One is dead. One, clearly, under the influence of alcohol, pulls a firearm, which she admits. She pulls a firearm, she points it towards the door. She comes into contact with easily a person that she would recognize as Philip Petros, there is a conversation with them, and he is killed. Whether the defendant pulled the trigger or whether the defendant put things in motion by being intoxicated, by pulling the gun, by holding it up, by not immediately dropping the gun upon recognizing that it's Philip Petros, by continuing to engage if there is some sort of struggle for the gun, and that gun going off the defendant would be guilty of manslaughter.